Good day, Grade Limits. Welcome to third lesson, week 23. So, so far we've learned about electric fields and we've learned about how to calculate electric field strength. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about magnetic fields around a current carrying conductor. So, let's watch this excellent video. Welcome to a new series on electromagnetism. Great 11s. Today, we will start by looking at what electromagnetism is. And then, we will focus on the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor. Let's start by looking at the word electromagnetism first. Electromagnetism is a branch of physical science that deals with the physical relationship between electricity and magnetism. The electro refers to the charges and the electric fields associated with the charges. And the magnetism deals with magnets and the magnetic field that is found around them. Let's see what the magnetic field around a magnet looks like. Remember, a material such as iron filings is a ferromagnetic material. This means it will be affected by a magnetic field and can therefore be used to detect the magnetic field. The bottle is filled with a mixture of water and iron filings. The strong magnetic field around the magnet exerts a force of attraction on the iron filings. We cannot see the magnetic field around the magnet, but we can see its effect. The magnetic field around this bar magnet can be detected by using a piece of paper and iron filings. The magnet is placed underneath the paper and iron filings are sprinkled on top of the paper. The iron filings are attracted to the magnet, so they show us the shape and size of the magnetic field, since they line up with the magnetic field. Take note of how many of the filings sit on the ends of the bar magnet. This is an indication that the field is the strongest at the poles of the magnet. There is an alternative way to detect these magnetic fields. Let's join KK to learn more about this. Another way to show the magnetic force field of a particular magnet is to place a series of free moving magnets around the magnet. Normally a compass points in the direction of the Earth's North Pole. Free moving magnets are found in plotting compasses. When you place these compasses near a magnet, these little compass needles all behave a bit differently. They experience a force of attraction or repulsion and so point in the direction of the magnetic field of the bar magnet, not to the north pole of the earth. Can you see how that near the north pole end of the bar magnet, the compass needles are repelled by the magnet and at the south pole end, they experience attraction and point towards the magnet. Did you notice that the plotting compasses form the same shape around the magnet as the iron filings do. The shape and size of the magnetic field can be represented on paper as a diagram. Kiki will show us how. To show this magnetic force field, we draw in the field lines around the bar magnet. We show the direction of the field as going from the north pole of the magnet to the south pole. We use arrows to show the direction of the force on the free moving compass needles. Remember that field lines never cross each other. Also, where there are many field lines close together, the magnetic field is strong. And where the field lines are far apart, the magnetic field is weaker. In electrostatics, we learned that there is a field around a point charge. This field is known as the electric field. Let's get Keke to show us that again. When a positively charged metal conductor is placed in a flat dish of oil containing small seeds, the seeds spread out to show the electrostatic force field pattern. This is because the seeds are insulators which can hold a charge and because they are charged, the seeds experience a force due to their electrostatic force field. We draw diagrams using field lines to represent the electrostatic field. In the case of an electrostatic field, the direction of the field is shown as the direction of the force applied to a positively charged point charge placed in the electrostatic field. In other words, the electrostatic field is shown by the direction in which the seed line up. We want to prove that there is a field around the current carrying conductor. 
KK was show was how to tell if this field is a magnetic field or an electric field. A free moving magnet will be affected by another magnet but will not be affected by a charged rod. This is because all free moving magnets will be affected by a magnetic field but not by an electrostatic field. A free moving charged PVC rod will not be affected by a magnet but will be affected by another charged PVC rod. This is because all free moving charged objects will be affected by an electrostatic field but not by a magnetic field. We see that a compass or other magnetic substance is affected by a magnetic field and a charged object is affected by an electric field. Now we'll look at the field around the current carrying conductor. For the experiment you need the following. Thick copper wire with no insulation. A square cardboard with a hole in the middle where the wire will fit tightly in. Wire to connect the power pack to the copper wire. An old type of salt and pepper shaker filled with iron filings. To begin our investigation, have a look at the apparatus I have here. I have a piece of copper wire that passes through a piece of stiff cardboard at right angles to the cardboard. These small plotting compasses can be placed on the cardboard around the copper conducting wire. Notice that I have placed the compasses in concentric circles. Next, I have connected the copper wire in series with a variable resistor to regulate the current passing through the conductor, an ammeter to measure the current, and a power supply. Now I'm going to turn on the power supply, and you need to look carefully at what happens to the compasses. What did you see? Let's look at that again. Notice that when the power supply is switched on, the compass needles together form concentric circles around the conductor. The compass needles remain in their new positions while charge flows through the conductor. What do you predict will happen when the current is switched off? Let's see what happens. When the current is switched off, the needles return to their original positions, pointing to the Earth's North Pole. I'm sure you'll agree that this is very clear evidence that a current passing through a conductor produces a magnetic field. This proves that there is a field around a current current conductor and that this field is a magnetic field. The first person to see this effect was Hans Ersted. Hans Christian Ersted was a professor of science at Copenhagen University. In 1820, he arranged a science demonstration for friends and students. He planned to demonstrate the heating of a wire by an electric current and also to carry out demonstrations of magnetism using a compass needle mounted on a wooden stand. As he did this experiment, he realized that a compass nearby deviated from the normal north-south direction every time the current was on. This was a very important discovery, a current barrier conductor that has magnetic properties. So grade 11s, um, as you should remember, I told you that this section was on electrostatics and electromagnetism. And we're getting there, but at the moment we've done electrostatics and now we're talking about electromagnetism. What you should have learned today was that if you have a current carrying conductor, in other words, if you have a conductor that is carrying current, then it produces a magnetic field around it. And that is pretty exciting. In the next lesson we'll talk more about that. Have a great day.